Today, I am putting a $20 mini hot plate to the test. With a price tag that's just a quarter of the name brand competition, can it deliver the same results? A couple of videos back, I showed you how to design and assemble circuit boards at home. The whole point of the video was to show you that it's totally possible to do at home without any special tools. But to do so, I did have to improvise a bit. Additional tools always come in handy and make the job easier, so when Secure offered to send me this hotplate for a review, I was very interested. It's the Secure T55 hotplate, and in this video I'll show you what's inside the box, how to use it, and I'll be assembling a couple of PCBs to see how it works. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. PCBWay is known for their high-end PCB prototyping services, but recently they expanded with 3D printing and CNC milling too. 3D printing is the most interesting service to me personally, and the really cool thing is that they can not only 3D print plastic, but also aluminium, stainless steel and even titanium, which is just on another level. To get your quote instantly, upload your CAD files and select your settings. You can double check your file in the 3D viewer, and when you're ready to order, make sure to click the first link in the description under this video. Over at Secure's website, the hotplate alone comes with a price of $20. You can get it alone or for just $10 extra, get the 65W power supply brick included as well. You can choose your power supply plug type and the last option is the XT60 to Type-C cable and I would definitely recommend this since you'll be able to power the plate from your power supply or even your LiPos. For this review I got the hotplate alone, but since I already reviewed some Secure products, I do have the 65W brick with the braided cable and I will show this to you too. In the product page you can see all of the specs and you can see that the maximum power is 100 watts, which is the same as on the Miniware MHP50. The hotplate comes in this small plastic box and is protected by foam from all sides. We literally get nothing else and even the user manual is in a form of a QR code. Scanning the QR code sends us to the secure website, where we can see all of the parameters and options. The hotplate arrives in a small plastic bag and overall looks really simple. There is an OLED display on the front two buttons on the back along with the USB Type-C connector for power, the bottom has a rubber sticker so the plate doesn't slide on the desk, and on the top is the main plate which heats up. There is a 3.5mm jack on the right side and even after using this plate for around a month I still have no clue what it does. It is not displayed anywhere in the pictures or in the manual so I will guess I'll have to write to support to find out what it is. The hot plate is made out of aluminium but the main plastic enclosure seems to be resin 3D printed. It's probably a good way to keep the cost down and it will not affect us in any way since this parts are usually used in prototyping and can handle normal use without a problem. So to power it up, we have the USB Type-C connector on the back. It works with power delivery and quick charge bricks, but with this custom XT60 to Type-C cable, the hotplate can accept regular DC voltage as well. The recommended input voltage is 19 to 25.2 volts, and that means you can use your 6S LiPos, which is awesome. I wanted to see what's the minimum voltage on the input, and the plate did work all the way down to 5 volts. It did work, but the power was less than 4 watts, and it did take around a minute to get to 45 degrees Celsius, starting from room temperature, so in real reality it's not really usable. 25.2 volts is the maximum input voltage, which means that it will work on 25 volts with USB PD bricks and that's really good. The higher the input voltage, the higher the power and quicker the heat time. But in my opinion, even the 19 volt heat time is perfectly fine since waiting around a minute and a half to bake a PCB is a lot faster than usual. The 65 volt brick that comes with the plate does 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, 15 volts and even 20 volts on the output. The included cable is braided and it's really nice. I used both of these every day for about a month now and everything was perfect and I didn't have any issues. With the supplied brick, the plate reaches 200 degrees celsius in around a minute and in my opinion this is perfectly fine and there is no need to chase higher power with a DC supply. I wanted to see the real power going into the plate and my USB power meter measured around 69 watts for a short second. To test the absolute maximum, I set my lampage power supply to 25 volts and tested it again with the power meter. The output power this time peaked at exactly 99 watts and it's really nice to see that the information in the description is genuine. To use the plate, it's almost the same user interface as on my secure S99 soldering iron. There are two buttons on the back. The left button decreases the set temperature, while the right button increases it. Holding the left button toggles work and stop modes, and holding the right button enters the main menu. In the menus we can adjust the temps, adjust the brightness of the screen, change language, limit power and change many other settings for which you can see a full list in the user manual. It's a really simple device, so it didn't take me long to show you all of its features. Since I covered everything I can think about, I would say that now is the perfect time to put it into some real world action. I'll be assembling two PCBs and baking each one on the plate. One of the PCBs is going to be the TP4056 dev board I designed in the PCB design video. And for the other board, I guess you'll see what it does in the upcoming video. Spoiler alert, 
it's going to be really cool. I'll quickly set up my stencil jig, same as before, and the paste I'm using is the low-temp AliExpress paste I got for like 3 euros. Even though it is cheap, it really surprised me, because the boards I assembled so far look really good. If you want to pick it up, check the links in the description below this video, and if you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to leave it a like. So, the stencil jig is finally set up, and this is how both boards turned out with the solder paste applied. Time to take the scope and start stuffing the boards. And the last component is in place, and it's finally time to bake these boards. I'll bake each PCB separately so we can see the plate in action two times. The solder paste melts at around 138 degrees Celsius, and I'll be cooking the boards at 220. And in just a little bit over a minute, all of the solder joints are melted and look really nice. The cool thing about having such a hot plate is that none of your components get blown away by the hot air station and it's really easy to move the components that are not in the right place. The only downside is that you cannot work on boards with components on both sides, but for my needs this is more than enough. And you can see that both boards turned out perfect. The hot plate is really easy to use and it's awesome how little space it takes up on my desk. It is definitely a tool I'll keep using for my PCB projects and if you're looking to get one too, this would be a really good option. For $20 I have nothing bad to say about it, but I'd love to hear what you have to say down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you in the next one.